Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Success Shift. My name is Jake. It is Thursday, and things are all action on my end. Um, I am off to Sweden in two days, which I cannot wait. I'm very excited for. Oh, there goes my alarm. I'm very excited for. First trip with the little man, first trip on a plane with the little man. And um, yeah, I was just saying that it's a lot different to the way I'm used to traveling. Before being a traveler, I'm like, let's pack a bag and in on the same day, um, you know, buy the ticket the day before and explore the place we're going. But with a small child and, you know, my wife's pretty good as well, but with a small child, it's it's definitely a lot different planning, packing, making sure he's safe with everything, making sure, you know, we've got uh, everything for myself and for him. Um, you know, we're going out sort of camping, so we need to make sure that we're well equipped. And yeah, it's a, it's a different form of traveling, but I'm very excited. I'm very excited to get him out in some nature and get him around the lake and just around some other people and get, you know, feet in the dirt, all that sort of good stuff. So I'm very grateful for opportunities as such. I'm very grateful for nature and uh, my love for travel because, you know, with that passion, we are constantly looking for opportunities and when one came up, we jumped on it and now we're off to the to the lovely, cool nature of Sweden. If anyone's ever been before, it's beautiful up there. Highly recommend it. Um, today, I also want to find gratitude for time, um, for other people's time. I think sometimes we take for granted, you know, I know now <laughs> how much I wasted my time when I was younger, um, before I had a child, but these days, you know, life can be so busy and everyone's got 101 things on their to-do list and everyone's struggling to find enough time to get things done. And most people, you know, haven't got their priorities right and they're all over the place. But when someone actually dedicates their time to you, I think that's one of the most valuable things that you can get. Someone's undivided attention and pure devotion um, to you at a particular time. So um, I've had the opportunity to spend some quality time with a couple of my mentors and a couple of people that um, I look up to and that have been guiding me along the way. And it's just, it really hits differently. So my gratitude is going out to some people who've given me their time um, a lot over this past week, especially. Um, and to those who continue to give me their time, you know, loved ones, family, all that sort of stuff. So chuck some gratitude in the chat for the things that you are grateful for today, things that you've been grateful for this week. Um, and yeah, let's get the ball rolling here as I read through this chat. Good morning, good afternoon. Grateful to be back with you. Parenting changes everything. Yes, it does. Lots more planning with kids. Also lots more fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Family memories in the making. Yeah, definitely. So been a little bit uh, slower on our gratitude in the chats lately. I want you to, we've got a couple more episodes before I'm taking a couple of weeks off. So we'll have a couple of weeks break. So I want you to really try for this today and tomorrow to chuck some gratitude in and have a big thought about the things that you're grateful for and the things that, um, you know, you can really, I always think that when I'm looking, thinking about things that I'm grateful for, how would my life be if I didn't have that thing that I'm thinking about? What would my life be if that thing was gone? Um, and some things that are small, you're like, oh, actually, I don't really need that thing. And some things that are small, you're like, wow, I would have a completely different life if I didn't have that thing. Like, imagine if we didn't have mobile phones. I know some people would go absolutely insane. You know, the yeah, ability to have contact with anyone around the world within seconds in your pocket at all times is incredibly powerful. Um, can be bad to some extent, but also very powerful. Um, and so, you know, finding gratitude for just that capability of having access to, you know, the world in a second. Because if you didn't have your phone, I know some people would definitely go absolutely crazy. Um, and myself included, you know, I work so much from with other people all over the world that I, I find myself on my phone almost too much, which is why I'm looking forward to a bit of a detach um, and a bit of a online detox when I go to Sweden. And not that I can completely detach, but it will still be nice to have that little bit of a, a break. So I am grateful for increasing trust and patience while being in process and progress. That's very powerful. I think for me, when I've been on my path of entrepreneurship, I have definitely not appreciated the process as much and not given it the time. And so often I think things can be done much faster than they can be. And then when I don't meet those deadlines or I haven't reached the goals at that time, I get very disappointed and very hard on myself. And I think, um, you know, being grateful for 
trusting the process and being patient while continuing to do those things. Now, I think lots of people get confused here and I'm just going to go off a bit of a tangent, but people say, you know, be patient and things will come and trust the process. But I read this, actually, I heard it from Andy Frisella, who was talking about aggressive patience and it's being patient. It's understanding the process, but going at it 100% continuously. Like if you want to have great success and do things that other people aren't doing, you have to have this, I wouldn't necessarily maybe call this cognitive dissonance, but the idea of sitting back and being patient on the macro scale, but on the micro scale, going at it hard 100% and being fully aggressive and doing the things that you need to do week in, month in, year in until you get the results because huge success doesn't happen overnight. Now, while the the glamour reel might happen overnight, you know, some people, they, they push for years and then all of a sudden it all comes into fruition and within a few months, their whole life is different and that's great, but that doesn't mean it happened overnight. It means that they were putting in the work they were, you know, doing the things, the iceberg under the water, the, the, all the effort that you don't see, you know, there's this great analogy of um, Usain Bolt. His fame doesn't come just from the 10 seconds he runs the track. His fame comes from the hundreds of hours of sprinting training he's done on his own on the track before he gets to that race. The 10 seconds is just the glory reel. The 10 seconds is just his his little bit of um, joy in front of the crowd, really all the work has already been done. And so we have to have a, an idea that, you know, while we need to be patient and respect the process and have given that time, which I think is very powerful. We also need to be aggressive in our day-to-day -day discipline. Grateful to be on the mend. Health is everything. Yes, it is. Health is really number one. I'm grateful for my trading family and their willingness to be honest and raw. I'm going to say it's real or raw. Oh, that's real. Okay. I was hoping it'd be like a raw. Anyway, <laughs> I'm grateful for my ability to bring encouragement to others by coming alongside of them to assist with them, assist them with things that they are not physically able to do on their own anymore. I am grateful for the process of finding more like-minded ladies on this journey of life that I find myself in right now. Super grateful for the promise of spring as I love the sun. Yes. I love that. You know, um, Spring is coming and the sun is glamorous and, you know, the, the ability to help people who need it and seeing the gratitude. Like, honestly, if you want to find true gratitude, go and help someone who is disabled or has been in an accident. Um, I used to work in a hospital and I've worked with um, mentally disabled children before and there's things that they can't do. But when you do help those people who, especially people who have been in a physical accident, who are very capable before, but now are not, they show tremendous gratitude because they had the ability to do the small things taken away from them. And honestly, when you start to help people like that, you see gratitude from them and you find a huge amount of appreciation and gratitude for the things that you do have. So um, good on you for helping those who, who need it there. Oh my, I love that. The Usain Bolt, dang. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I think that sticks with me a lot sometimes. Um, sometimes I, I'm like, why haven't I got the results and why, why am I at this level yet? But then I realized that all the stuff that I'm doing now, all the lessons, all the struggles, all the challenges that I'm facing, that is part of the process. That is part of the 10 second run at the end. Um, you know, when it all works out and when you have that account, that's like the glamour reel of, of all the work you put in and the heart of the story, the heart of the fight is now the better the, the success story at the end. And I often think about this to myself when I'm in my hard times and I'm like, you know what, this is a challenge. If I can get over this one as well, it will just add to my success story at the end. So keep that in mind and keep your same bolt in your, in your mind for, um, for, when, for when you're down in the dumps the next time or if you're having a bit of a hard time. All right, so this week we have China Bean focus on self-sabotage. Okay, now we were looking yesterday, not yesterday, see, brains all muddled we're looking on tuesday um about self-sabotage kind of how it happens why it happens and some of the traits and we spoke briefly about um some of the main reasons why you can do so why, why self-sabotage is present um one very most common one is lack of self-worth or so low, low self-esteem then we have fear of success fear of failure familiarity so you know making assumptions based on your past experiences we have that 
inconsistency, that conflicting thoughts. So when when the thoughts that you're thinking conflict with the values um, and you can't really align, like the thoughts, this, this is like cognitive dissonance when the thoughts that you have go against your values and so you're not sure if you want to follow through based on, on your values or your thoughts. So therefore you self-sabotage so that that way, you know, whatever it is you're doing kind of fails and you don't have to have that conflict between thought and, and core values. Uh, then we have social and peer pressure. Um, that's quite a big one, especially this day and age with online, you know, social presence and then the need to be in control. And so this is like control with yourself. And I, I, the more I delved into this, the more I realized maybe this is where my self-sabotage comes from, which I found very fascinating. Um, you know, you want to be in control. And so if you're going to fail, it's because you had a reason to fail. When you succumb to all that could be and you just give yourself 100%, then you're out of control. Then there's the possibility that you don't have an excuse as to why you failed. You just failed because you weren't good. And I think a lot of people struggle to um, to deal with that. And because of that, we had this term called defensive failure that I was talking about. And defensive failure is kind of, you know, when you fail somewhat on purpose to defend yourself or your pride or you redirect and you distract from the core reasons. And I think the three th the three reasons we discussed were either you think you can't do it, so you really don't believe in yourself, something we've spoken about. People like you don't do things like this, so your identity doesn't match with the behaviors that you're doing. We spoke really, we've spoken quite a lot about identity and how important it is to shift the identity of the person you want to be in order to get the things you want. And three, you don't actually want to do it. So you're either doing it for the wrong reasons. Um, and this, remember, we we're talking about intrinsic reasons, which is real desire, passion, interest, that kind of thing, which is going to keep you going um, almost endlessly in that uh, infinite game place kind of style. And then we had intrinsic reasons. So I'm doing it to please my mom. I want my friends to think I'm cool. You know, I want this money so that I can buy this X, Y, Z so that I can post on Instagram or I only want this so that I can go on holidays and compare it to the neighbor next door, whatever it is. These extrinsic reasons aren't going to be strong enough to really keep keep you pushing. And this is kind of more about your why. So if you know your why and your why is an intrinsic and your deep why, like seven levels deep why, is an intrinsic reason that's very, very ground and matched to your core beliefs, you are going to find a way to play the infinite game and continue to play that infinite game until you reach success. If your why is not deep enough and it's still at an extrinsic level, then your why is going to fade and you're going to find um, struggles and pain in the times where it's difficult and you're going to be stuck in that finite gameplay trying to reach an end goal and not having the desire to keep pushing when it gets tough and eventually probably end up quitting. So I think this is a very interesting set of, um, I guess, paths to follow. Find out really where your deep value why is so that you know if you're wanting to do something like truly wanting to do something intrinsically and then you can start to eliminate certain aspects of why we're self-sabotaging okay so look back at the seven things we just spoke about which one um, could it possibly be i mean there might be more but i'm sure you can start with one and you know work your way through this is actually where the core root of my self-sabotage comes from what beliefs do I need to change? What core values maybe do I need to reassess? Where is my identity in association with this? And how can I shift that? Because at the end of the day, self-sabotage, it speaks for itself, really. It's in the name. It's all about how you are attacking yourself. And how do we understand that? Well, we just need to learn ourselves more. It's all about self-awareness. Self-sabotage comes from negative self-talk, a negative self-narrative, and studying yourself and being self-aware to such a degree that you know why things are happening. At the end of the day, most people will study degrees. They will study other people. They will study their neighbors. They will study their friends or to have opinions and judgments. But many people don't spend that much time studying themselves. And I mean truly studying yourself, understanding why you do the things you do, understanding whether the beliefs you have are yours or if they're someone else's built up from childhood, etc. You know, understanding why you do the things you do, understanding um, how you cope and how you react and how you respond in certain situations, understanding what emotions are stronger for you, understanding if you are emotional, understanding if you need to provide more emotion, if you're a bit cold, who knows? You know, understanding ourselves is 
kind of, in my perspective, the key to trading, because I say it's the best personal development program in the world because it brings back all those truths. It's just you versus an unjudgmental, um, unbiased chart. And so really it's you versus you on the charts. It's you versus how do I respond to this ever-changing environment that has no direct uh, it's like it's my, what I'm trying to say is it's not intended to affect me, but we think it is because of the way we see. It's almost like a mirror in a sense that something happens there. How do you respond? All it was was a line moving, but you have attached all this thought, value, belief, and understanding to this line, which in turn creates emotions, response, memories, whatever it does, and this allows you to behave in a certain way, whether that's good or bad. And so it's kind of us versus us, and how we perceive the line moving is based on, oh, that's money. What what do we perceive that exact movement to be? Oh, there's a color on the chart and it's gone up or down. It's really that straightforward, but we put so much meaning to it. And that all comes from our past experiences, our past emotions and everything that we hold on to. Okay. So self-sabotage comes from, oh, that candle moves. How does that affect me? How do I respond? What is my self-awareness? What is my self-worth? What is my self-understanding? oh, I don't like it, I'm going to sabotage myself in some way. Um, and again, coming from many different areas. And this is just my input on self-sabotage based on my own learnings. So, you know, it can be, it's a bit of a, uh, a bit of an ambiguous kind of subject in the sense that it can be different for everyone. But the overall idea behind self-sabotage is something inside you is starting to change and your subconscious basically doesn't want to um, have that change or, your subconscious doesn't want to admit they're wrong. And so therefore it attacks you in a certain way to keep that harmony about its own self, the subconscious just being like, I'm actually good here, whether that's true or not, I don't want change or whether, you know, if I give up all control and I allow things to just happen, then I can act, then I'll actually have to admit that I'm wrong or I don't know something. I don't like that. So self-sabotage happens. This can be seen in something like the imposter syndrome, which is what I wanted to move on to because often and I was talking about this in a chat yesterday, but the point of this show is to really get people to understand that success is a state of mind. And if we can shift our perspective on that, then hopefully we can use the idea that, yeah, I am successful already to act as a catalyst to further success. And so the one thing that is a problem with that is imposter syndrome. If you can't say that you're successful now or you start to make success and then what happens, you go, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. Actually, who am I to say this? You know, me perfect example like who am I to run this podcast who am I to have you know the listeners that I've got continuously listening to me when I'm in the situation I am and imposter syndrome is something that's come up for me as well but you have to understand that in this world all you need to do is be helping one person that's a step behind you one arm up one arm down and if you can find truth and actually align your values to that and be like you know what I'm not an imposter all I'm doing is helping one person or two people who need the one leg up. And if I can get pulled up by one person, just, just one leg up and pull someone else up one, that's enough to, I think, banish this imposter syndrome because really all we're trying to do is layer up and work to a higher state of ourselves. So one thing, the reason I bring this up is because imposter syndrome is something that I think is a very common um, phase, let's say, that people reach before they kind of break into success because they're doing something consistently and maybe getting results. However, once they start to branch out or once they start to expand, they go, oh, actually, maybe that's not me. Maybe I haven't got the right identity. Maybe I don't have the, this, these right beliefs. I need to pull back a little bit. I'm not actually that person, which can be very hard to comprehend, I guess, and very hard to take on. So I wanted to bring that up because I want you to keep in mind that Self-sabotage can happen from many, 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 um, many, many avenues, let's say that. And one thing that I was reading the other day was this domino effect. And so sometimes what happens is, say, I'm feeling imposter syndrome for this podcast, let's say, just, just going to use this as an example. And then I actually take that out in a different area of my, my life in the sense that the domino effect happens where I'm stressed about money. And so therefore I end up, uh, I don't know, eating poorly. 
And so my stress about money ends up actually acting out in a self-sabotaging way against my diet. And this can be seen in many different areas. So maybe if I feel a bit of imposter syndrome, maybe I get off this podcast and I'm like, oh, you know, I shouldn't be doing that. And then I jump on the charts with this negative self-talk and I'm just taking bad trades all day because I'm actually self-sabotaging on the charts based on my feelings I have about my imposter syndrome. Okay, now I want to make it clear that I have had waves of feeling imposter syndrome, but I've definitely found ways to manage pattern recognition, pattern interruption, and move on from that. So I don't feel that um, anymore. But it's a very interesting perspective to look at. What areas of your life maybe is causing stress, is causing frustration, is causing friction? And then possibly what other areas are you taking that out on? Now, this is called the domino effect where um, the lady that I was hearing it from was talking about how she... Every time she got stressed with money, she'd pick at her fingers or pick at her face. And this would be very detrimental to her. And then obviously she'd pick at her face. She'd lose a lot of self-esteem and she'd lose her confidence and she wouldn't want to go out in public anymore. And then when she's at work, she's not working very well because she's scared of her face. And then what happens? She doesn't work as well. Or she doesn't get enough shifts in her casual job because she's going through a phase of some sort. And this cycle just kind of repeats. And so the reason I bring this to your attention is look at like, Self-study, self-assess, understand yourself to such a level that maybe the self-sabotaging that's happening on the charts is coming from somewhere else. Maybe you're in a relationship that's not as healthy that you like, and so that's putting stress and strain on you, and so therefore you self-sabotage in the charts because you go, oh, this person doesn't love me. Why should I love me? Look, I'm no good at trading either. Of course they won't. So this can be like this knock-on effect where one thing in our life is causing negative self-talk, um, and a negative narrative. And then we take it out in other areas to kind of prove that self-talk right. And again, our subconscious wins because it's like, see, this idea said that you're not. And then look, you can't even do it over here. And so it's this kind of knock-on effect. So really looking at things as a whole, understanding that maybe the self-sabotage isn't coming directly from what you're doing. Like you might be really good at one thing, but then the self-sabotage is actually being caused by something else. And you're like, why am I doing this to myself in this area? but it's actually because of something else that's going on. It's actually because your subconscious is trying to prove itself right in another area. Okay, does that make sense to people? Chuck some ones. I know it's a complicated concept. Please let me know that I haven't lost you. If I have lost you, please chuck some twos because sometimes I feel that when I'm talking here, um, I can get off topic and people get confused. But no, ones, 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 totally makes sense. Perfect. Okay, good. That's what I want to hear. Okay, now lastly to, to knock on in the last couple of minutes here, it's, it was basically about ways to get through and understand this self-sabotage and um, obviously journaling, writing things down, having those conversations with yourself. Um, you know, I always say writing is the connection between the conscious and the subconscious. So journal all these things out, talk to yourself about how you're feeling in the moment with one thing. You know, if you have a bad day on the charts, rather than just journaling, definitely journal all your emotions through the, through the trading, but then go, okay, what else was happening in my life during today that may have met, maybe affected me emotionally which is possibly where this behavior could have come from. Just taking it that next step further, you know? Then, oh, we've got a couple of minutes. Um, actually, you know, I was there's this little exercise that I was going to talk about um, with ways to write it down, understand your negative, understand the negative belief, and then write down the opposite to that so you can start to pattern recognize and pattern interrupt. We've only got two minutes left, so I think I'm going to leave that for tomorrow. Um, give yourself the extra couple of minutes to go and run through the charts. I hope that's made sense to some people. I'm just running through the back through back through the charts here. Jake, you triggered tears. Looks like I need to do some digging into what just happened there. Well, that's awesome. Well, I'm glad that I was able to bring up that emotion. I'm glad that you've maybe hit a chord which you can start working on, which is amazing. You know, tears are obviously the start of some big emotion. And when you can latch onto that and figure out what it is, that's a good sign to change. So I'm I'm kind of happy that I made you sad, but I'm also um hopeful that it the happy tears that can be used for progression. Um, much love to everyone. Jump on the charts and make sure you go through your trading journals. Make sure that you read through your whys, read through your trading plan. Make sure you do all the things that you need to do to stay routine and stay disciplined on the charts. Uh, much love, everyone. I know it's a bit full on at the moment in, in my, my life. Just a quick reminder, next week and the week after, we will have no episodes because I will be in Sweden and I'm having a break. So tomorrow will be the last episode for the next couple of weeks. And then we'll be back couple of weeks break with new episodes, some new interviews and episode 100, which I'm super excited for. So thank you very much, everyone. Much love. And to the people listening on the podcast, I'll speak to you tomorrow. To the traders, I'll see you soon. Bye.